warning, when our, uh, when our guest speaker comes forward to speak, make sure we're using uh, great listening ears and our, our minds are turned on. Uh, you know, we talk about academic excellence and Christ-centeredness and family. Part of the ways that we can communicate our mission is being a good audience, and so that's the, my hope and prayer for you. Anyway, at this time, I'd like to introduce our guest speaker. Uh, his, uh, this is a gentleman's name is Regis Woods, and he is uh, giving of his time to us this morning. He's got an awesome story. I'm not going to even try to spoil it or explain any of it to you right now because I want you hear directly from him, but I'm going to welcome him for it. Let's give him a big Grace Christian School welcome. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. How y'all doing? Good. Good. Oh, man. So I am Regis Woods. Um, what I'm going to do uh, with you guys today is I'm going to basically just sh share my testimony. And I'm going I'm to keep it real with you guys. I'm not, I'm not going to come up here and give you a lecture and, and bore you guys because we all like to have fun, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Living in the shoes of Regis, life was hard. Kids picked on him because of the way he walked. As he walked down the hall, y'all, he heard them talk. Called him everything but a child of God. Why? Because he didn't have no legs. Went to his mom, and this is what she said. She said, hey, son, it'll be OK. The more they talk about you, the more you pray. Trust in the Lord, he'll show you the way. Never give up. Hey, <laughs> you can do it. All you got to do is put your mind to it and pursue it. Lean on the Lord and he'll help you through it. Trust me, I know, because God came through and he opened up doors. Because my life, God has turned it around. My biggest haters make up the majority of my crowd screaming, hey, Regis, you can do it. All you got to do is put your mind to it. Some call me the greatest and some call me the best. At the end of the day, I just call myself blessed. Man said no, but God said what, y'all? Yes. yes. Man said no, but God said? Yes. Man said no, but God said? Yes. I can do all things through? Wow. I can do all things through Christ that what? Yes. And what's impossible to man is, is possible to who? God, the Lord. What's impossible to man is possible to God, with God. I am Regis Woods, two-time U.S. Paralympian, four-time four world, cha world championship team member, um, eight-time, current eight-time national champion, um, in three events, 100, 200, and long jump. As you can see, I can fly a little bit. <laughs> so I was in the uh, Paralympic Games in 2016, which is the, the photo here. We were in, in, in Brazil. This was my first uh, Paralympic Games. Also participated in Tokyo 2020 in Japan, which was an amazing, amazing event. So a little story about, about me getting I was, a born, I was born with a, a congenital anomaly that prevented the proper development of my tib and fib. All right, I'm going to break it down. So the two bones in my legs weren't developed. I had legs and feet when I was born, but um, uh, they, had to put, they gave my mom the choice to either put rods or do the surgery, which was the amputation. Um, the amputation was the best decision because if, if she would have went with the rods, I would have been in and out of surgeries throughout my, my childhood and school career. Um, it was a tough decision, but the best decision. Um, I went on going through school and, and, and started running when I was about 10 years old. I'm just speeding things up here. Um, got pretty good at, at, at running track and field. It, gives, it gave me a, a sense of worth. I, I have over three, over three, four hundred uh, Gold, gold medals or first place win at, in the youth division. Um, so I continue my track and field endeavor, but I'm gonna speed up to 2016. Was a big year for me. Um, 25th, I'm gonna back up, 2015. I, I, I brought this medal, I'm gonna pass around to you guys. This is a very special medal as well. Um, 2013, I got my big break. 
Uh, I, I uh, actually made my first team, went over to France, thought I, I was just sharing with the gentleman in the back, I thought I was the biggest, baddest thing in America, in the world, right? There's a big world out there, guys. So I go to Leon, France, my first time out of the U.S., thinking I'm going to go up there and win, right? <laughs> Number one in the U.S., Number eight in the world, I went and got last place in every race. <laughs> I made a pact with myself that that would never happen again. But the race is not given to the strip nor the strong. It's the ones that endure to the end, right? All right. So next year, different story. 2015, different story. 2015, I made the U.S. team again to go to the World Championships. I went to Doha, Qatar in the Middle East. Um, Doha, Qatar in the Middle East, uh, one of the favorites to win. Got in the, the long jump was my first event. Came down the runway, coach says, hey, Regis, you're going to do one jump and we're out of here because you have to run the 200. We was focused on the 200 meters and that was one of my things. I wanted to beat the world record holder and I was in shape and I was ready and I was prepared to do it. Some things in life that we may plan may not be God's plan. It wasn't God's plan for me to win that 200 meter race that day, but it was his plan for me to show the world that you can do all things and you can do anything and all things are possible with God and to overcome adversity with a positive attitude. So I had to practice what I preached that day. In the long jump, I came down the runway and miscalculated. And instead of me being in a flying position, I was still in a driving position. Hit the board so fast, came up, and I came down. Boom! Broke my rib. I broke my rib. I was out of breath. I laid there for a second. I got up, went to my coach in the stands, and I said, Coach, I think I broke my rib. And he says, all right, well, we got to shut it down. And I said, no, Coach. If I can jog back to my seat, I'm going to continue because I've lost too much to get here. My very next jump, I jumped and won gold, a bronze medal in the long jump on a broken rib. Came back the next day on a broken rib, won the prelims of the 200 meters. Unfortunately, days later when I ran the finals, I came in fourth place. I didn't come in last. Mind you, a couple years later, I just got spanked, but I did all this on a broken rib. And um, if there's a will, there's a way. And that, that was that that God in me, that, that I can do all things through Christ, that strength is, I, all of that that my mom instilled in me, all that was going through my head, that I can't give up no matter what. And I don't want you guys to ever, ever do that. No matter what you're going through, you got to keep focused and you got to keep pressing forward, whether it be school, work, um, everyday life, at home, you got to keep going. So the next year, well, the same year earlier, I uh, went to the Pan Am Games. Um, in Toronto, Canada, um, suffered an injury during competition. They told me, once again, we need to shut it down. And I'm saying no. I went to physio, got ready, and um, went out. And I did a meet record in the long jump and won gold, my first gold medal, which is online. You can see it um, with, with another injury. I didn't do this alone. I did this with God. That was the only way that I can get through this. And I'm going to pass this medal around. This is a real gold medal, um, guys. And it's, uh, this is from Toronto. This is my long jump gold medal. It's all banged up. I'll get it re some years from now. But here it is. They're pretty heavy. 2016. I'm in Charlotte to make the games, to go to, to Brazil. I'm in the long jump once again. They put the long jump as my first race. I'm like, I'm hoping, I'm, my first event, I'm hoping that I can go and do the 200 meter and 100 meter and get those out of the way, then do the long jump because it's a lot of stress on, on my body and it's a lot of stress on those, those blades, uh, those prosthetic feet. They're called the blades are the cool name for them, but it's just a prosthetic running foot. But doing the long jump, it's a lot of stress on those things. I'm putting four or five times my body uh, weight into, the, into those things. And then I'm in, in about 30 meters, about from here to that door back there, um, I get up to 
9.98 miles an hour. I cover 9.33 uh, meters per second. So just imagine coming in 20 miles an hour, boom, taking the jump. It, that's very rough, right? So I come down the runway at the Olympic trial, the Paralympic trials to make this team. This is my shot to make this team. I trained four years to get here. Run down the runway, boom, I exploded, literally. Hit the, hit the board and my blades broke. They broke on me. Cartwheel into the sand and I'm looking down at these legs like, really, you wanna do this right now? I sacrificed everything. I, sac my, uh, I lost uh, my job, uh, means of, my means of being able to take care of my family to pursue my dream. Life is about taking chances. And then you're gonna break on me right now? That's where faith had to kick in. That's where faith really had to kick in. God makes the impossible possible. And to everyone in the stadium, they thought I was done. So me, being a prosthetic technician, former prosthetic technician, I'm thinking, hey, wait a minute. I'm not like you guys. I can go over here to this bag and put another foot on. <laughs> so I go to my bag. That they say, Woods, can you continue? I say, yes, yes, I can continue. Go to my bag. Only one running blade. I'm missing both. Both of them broke. So I get the one, put it on. I saw another competitor walking by with his leg on his, on his shoulder. <laughs> and I said, hey, uh, Andre, let me borrow your blade. He was like, dude, you just broke two of them, man. This is my only one. And I'm like, no, dude, I promise you I won't break it. And so I unbolted his. He was like, all right. I said, I unbolted his and bolted. It was the only one that could retrofit to mine. So I bolted it on my other, my other side. I didn't bolt it on my jump side. So once again, I'm adapting. Stepping out on faith. Mind you, I put this thing on, and it's like drive. It's like being in a car with a flat tire. That's, that's the best way to describe it. Because first of all, it was, way, it was about this much too short. Uh, and it had, it was the... It was the worst blade in the world. No rebound, no nothing. So, once again, I adapt. Got on the runway, got my stuff together, took an extra little time, shot down the runway, bum, bitty, bum, bitty, bum, bitty, bum, and boom. And I was flying. I was flying. It seemed like I kept flying. I'm like, okay. Boom, I stick the landing. Guess what? That jump sealed me a spot on the U.S. Paralympic team. And there it is, me in the Olympic Stadium in Brazil, flying, representing God, my country, my family, soaring through the air, sticking my landing. Just imagine if I would have gave up. Just imagine if I, if I didn't have Christ on my side. Where would I have been? I would have been sitting at the house. So, moving on from that, 2017, um, I'm going to tell you one more story, then I'm going to get out of here. And let, well, I know I'm going to open it up for some questions real quick. Um, 2017, I'm in France, coming around the curve of the 200 meters. Guess what happened? Yeah, you can say it. What happened? It broke. <sighs> so I get up, and I hop over 170 meters on one prosthetic leg. It's on YouTube. Um, I hop on one prosthetic leg over 170 meters and cross the finish line. The race is not given to the swift nor the strong, but it's given to the one that what? Endureth to the end. I got up and finished. It wasn't about me. It wasn't about me that day. The mistake that I made going into that race is I made it about me instead of giving all glory to him. But until he reminded me that he is the one, because he is the one that allowed me to get up and do the impossible, God will make the impossible possible. And that day, he showed the world through me that he's still performing miracles. A guy that they said would never, the doctor said, that would never walk, that would never run, that would never skip, that would never jump, that would never play as the other kids, was running on two prosthetic running blades. They broke, and he got up and hopped on the very thing that they said that he could not do, but he, 
not, not only did he hop, he hopped on one prosthetic leg and, and crossed the finish line. Show, he, I showed the world through Christ that no matter what it looks like to other, you keep going. And if I haven't said anything else today that you guys can remember, I'll, the, the, the only, the, what I want you guys to remember today is to never say never and to dream big. And that God is always there. All you have to do is simply call on him. That's all you have to do. And he, I promise you. And they have, they have this uh, song, he's an on-time God. Yes, it is. He may not come when you want him, but he'll be there right on time. I didn't understand why that blade broke at that time, but it was bigger than me. It went from everybody oohing and on to a standing ovation because I showed them that there is a God. And you guys, there is a God. And I want to let all you guys know that you can make it. You will, you will achieve. You will be successful. You will be the best at whatever you want to be. You, you can be what you want to be. When I see your smile, the whole world stops and stares for a while. Because you're amazing just the way you are. I'm Regis Woods. So, I know I'm probably out of time, but I have a little bit more time, so if anybody have any questions, listen, no questions are dumb questions. I've been asked any and every question you can never think of, so don't be shy. I'll answer to the best of my ability. Uh, raise your hand, and I got you. No, raise that. Raise it high. Be confident, confident, confident. Do I still race? Good question. Yes, I do still race. So currently, right now, I am training for the Paralympic Games that are, which are happening next year in Paris. Paris 2024, Regis, I, this is my first stop on the road to, Regis Ruiz Road to Paris. <laughs> Any more questions? There you go. How high? So it is a, oh man, I should have put that, got that picture up. So it's a picture of me, it's on my Instagram, of me doing the long jump. And I got, uh, let me see. Let's see. In a seated position up in the air, I, I was probably about right up in here. So I can literally jump over a car. Um, Literally, like no, no joke. Uh, let's see. Scroll down, 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 down. Yeah, I can literally jump over cars. So I, I get about eight, eight foot up in the air and 20, 20 feet out in the, uh, in the long jump. I don't know if it, it may be on there, but it's a lot of pictures on there. That's my Google, that's on uh, Google Images, guys. So if you want to look up some of my stuff, you can just Google Regas Woods and you'll find my images and videos all over the internet. But yes, uh, so about, about eight foot up in the air, and maybe in a, in a, uh, 20 feet out. Yes, 20 feet. How hard do I train? Oh my gosh. So that's another thing, guys. And this will relate to your schoolwork. The, the, the race, the, the jumps, that's the easy part. Preparation. Your test should be the easy part. It's the preparation that's, that's challenging. And um, I work very, very hard. It's, it, um, being the best, uh, being the greatest, or the quote, so they call it these days, the greatest of all time, it's not easy. Uh, you have to make a lot of sacrifices. You can't, I couldn't go play like all my other friends did. I, 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 I couldn't go to parties. Um, I had to, had to train, I had to get my rest, I had to get my nutrition, I had to get my sleep, I had to go to, I went to church. Um, that, that was my outlet, I went, I went to church, because I'm a church musician, I play, I play keyboard, I sing, I play the drums. Music was my first passion. Um, so I trained very, very hard. Uh, some days, some, it, when it gets crunch time, I'm training sometimes seven days a week. Um, active day recoveries, I'm not lifting weights every week, I'm not running all the time, but it's very, very intense. Uh, some days I feel like the coach needs to call 911, but he doesn't. <laughs> so very, very hard. How did this school find me? It's easy to, it's, it's, 
It's easy to find Regis Woods. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, Grace, 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 she found me. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is, this is it. Is you got audio on that? Not remember it. Here he is here. In the fourth round, Woods flying through the air in the best jump of the night. No question about that. Yeah. Here you go, Regis. Very Small impressive. jump final. Look at the speed he's generating. Plants as close to the line as you can expect. Good elevation. Woods born with that uh, congenital anomaly. His yeah, legs, Regis. His tibia and fibula developing improperly had them amputated. And my buddy's dog's in the background. Don't mind you. Um, keep, let, let it play, let it play. It's going to show you the... Don't say the best jump of the night, and here it goes. The result, Regis Woods, gold medal. <laughs> and guess what? Guess what, y'all? That gold medal is the one that is getting passed around. So you got to see how I made that. Uh, Yes, it does. It, take, it's, it takes 500, if, if you was to run right now, and I'm just walking here, it takes five time, 500 times more energy for me to walk than for an able-bodied person to run. I'm constantly working out when I'm walking. Every day is a workout for me. So yes, it's, very, it's, it's not an easy thing, but it's doable. How many calories? Oh, see, I'm not the best example on that. <laughs> so that's, that's one of the biggest things right now. I'm, I'm looking for, I'm trying to get me a, 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 a nutrition uh, or meal prep sponsor right now because that's been one of my, my things, not, not governing and taking uh, for us calories and stuff. But that's very, very important. So I've been riding off of genetics for a long time. Yeah. Yes, yes, I can sit down with him. So that's a, that is a, that's a very, very good question. Because the simplest things um, that an able-bodied person would not even think about, it's big to, a, to an amputee. She asks, can you sit down with those? That is, that is so simple, right? That is something that we don't even think about, right? That is something that I have to think about. And yes, I, I can sit down. I had to learn how to actually sit down with the prosthetic legs without falling, without stumbling or embarrassing myself falling on the ground. Um, so what I have on now, I actually have an app on my phone where I can control, <laughs> where I can adjust my prosthetics through Bluetooth. Um, there my, I, I'm wearing a microprocessor knee. It analyze my, analyzes my walking gait 20 times per second. It has a gyroscope in it. I'm, uh, I understand helicopters have those things in there. So, um, depending upon the, the, the heel pressure and the toe load is how fast or quickly this knee will bend. So I can go to, it allows me to go down ramps slowly versus me being out of control on a conventional prosthetic. Um, going down steps, it allows me to ride down the step versus the knee buckling and me falling on the ground. So being an amputee, we have problems with falling a lot, so they've developed technologies that will help aid that. Very, very good question. Fastest hunt, fastest time in the uh, in the hundred meters uh, was 12, 12, eight, 12, eight, um, in the hundred meters. Being a bilateral amputee, that's smoking fast. Uh, bi a bilateral uh, um, or single unilateral below the knee amputees. Those are those are the guys that run a lot faster. We're in different classifications. Um, you have a guy. We have a guy. Uh, one of my teammates, Richard Brown, runs a 10-6, 10-5 or 10-6 in 100 meters, which is one of the bare minimum requirements to make it into the able-bodied Olympics for, well, the trials. 
So we got guys running 10 seconds in the Paralympics in 100 meters. We got guys like Marcus Rim from, from uh, Germany jumping over eight meters. It's like 843, 870 in the, in the long jump. So we're doing some phenomenal things in the Paralympic world. My fastest speed, fastest speed on record, on paper, um, and I would have, I wish we could have, I could have did it during 2016 again, the off the jump, it was 20, it was just shy of 21 miles an hour, 20.98. 20 Can I ride a bike? Yes. Stationary bike, I do a lot of that stuff for us, um, cardio. How can you, how can I drive? Very, very good question. You guys are. You guys are on it today. Um, I drive just like, just like any of your parents would do. I'm kind of a superhuman, I think, because I went against everything that they said that was impossible for an amputee to do. I'm actually one, uh, the only one out of my siblings that could drive a standard shift transmission. Yeah, so I drive stick shift, I drive motorcycles, I do stunts. I was on Super Street Bike Magazine, Two Wheel Tuning Magazine, the show Super Bikes with Jason Britton back in 07 doing those crazy stunts, don't ever try that, um, doing backflips off motorcycles and they're going and going to catching them and doing all that type of stuff. So yes, I could drive. Yes, yes, I get that a lot. Um, more so when I'm, out of, when I'm out of the state. I mean, everybody, a lot of people know me here so I'm pretty common, but when I, when I go out of state, and especially at my events, and um, like overseas, a lot of times we have to have security. Yeah, so a lot of people recognize it. How old was I? Oh, that's another good question. I was, uh, got my first set of prosthetics, and I should have brought them with me, because they are literally this, <laughs> this long, this small. Um, I got them when I was about uh, three years old. Can I swim? I'm not a good swimmer. <laughs> I, can, I can swim a little bit. Oh my gosh, years. All right, someone take a while, guess. How, how old do you think I am? Green shirt right here. Whoa, thank you. <laughs> 10? That was the age. That's when I started running. I started running at the age of 10. I wish I was 10. 31? Oh man, you're doing real good. So I was 31. No, I was older than that when I was, okay, go ahead. No, I'm not 31. 35, so that's how old I was right there. Now you're getting close. 39, now you're getting close. I am 42 years old. I am 42 years old, still competing. I have a <laughs> I have a 19 year old daughter, a 15 year old super athlete son, which is the return of Regis Woods part two. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's an awesome athlete. Then I have a 10 year old Trent in uh, all those all of men's sports. Can I run with those? That's a very very good question. So um, I can maybe from here to that door if I had to run and catch a kid or something like that. Thank you. Has everyone got a chance to hold this? This thing's pretty heavy. Um, just it, they're not designed for running because I'll actually burn the, the computer up and it, it is not it, the computer doesn't react fast enough to keep up with me and it'll, it'll, it'll overheat it. No, um, so I wear a size 11. Um, I could change my shoe size to size five if I want to. I, if I if I didn't want to pay the expensive prices of having adult shoes, I can go down to a kitty shoe, but that would look kind of funny, right? <laughs> I also can increase my size, my, my height by a turn of a screw. But uh, that would look very funny as well. If I got too short, it would look weird. If I was too tall, it would be weird. So I kind of keep it kind of <laughs> in the middle. Um, where were you born in Gainesville? Where was I born? Good question. Gainesville. I was born at Shan. And uh, yeah, Shan's Hospital in Gainesville. Um, I was born there. And I currently reside in the big old town of Dunnellan. I'm, uh, I'm also a football coach at Dunnellan, one of the football coaches at Dunnellan High School for the varsity and JV, and also Pop Warner football. So I do coaching and I'm a track coach at Dunnellan and do uh, speed training around the county. 
Are they comfortable to wear? That's another good question. Um, so it takes, like when getting a new prosthetic leg, uh, it's, it, it's a little difficult because you, I go through months of going back and getting um, adjustments so that it can be comfortable to, to, to customize it. Yes. Yes. That, that is a great point there. Um, I experienced bullying before bu bullying was called bullying. And the worst feeling for a, a, a child or a human being, period, is not to be accepted by their peers. But we have, we have, we have a, a, a humorous God because if he made us all the same, there wouldn't be no flavor around. You know what I'm saying? It wouldn't, it, it, the, this, the world wouldn't be unique. It wouldn't be, you know what I'm saying? If everybody was, was the same, this world would be a boring place. So yes, um, as a kid, um, I developed a, a complex where I didn't want to be around people. I hated large crowds of people because if I'm walking past a person, I'm walking different. And they're looking, and before I was all, I never wore pants. I mean, I never, I'm sorry, I never wore shorts um, in elementary, middle school, even high school. I never wore shorts. I didn't start wearing shorts until I got out of school. And it took me that long to get really comfortable with who I was because I realized that I had a purpose, and my purpose was to inspire and to motivate and to show people that you can be comfortable with who you are. And, and um, the, the big part of it was when a, when, a, when a person doesn't understand a situation, they tend to, to pick on it or, or do things like that. So when, 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 when you're able to vocalize and, and, and explain the situation and communicate, then that, that's how you, you bridge the gap with that. So I, I, would, I would rather people ask questions than to just stare, you know what I'm saying? And sometimes if I see a kid, like a little kid looking, I walk up and, hey, you wanna, and I'll, hey, this is my robot leg, which it is, there's a computer in it, you know what I'm saying? So, but my mom was a big part in, in that, being a strong support system. Um, she didn't shelter me, and so that's, that's one of the things that parents can't do. You can't shelter your kids from a lot, but you just got to reassure them that it's, it's gonna be okay, you gotta be a support system for it. And, and I've developed, developed tough skin over the years, but um, once I started doing cool things and everything started to, to die, it's just one of those things that kids go, it's just one of those things in life that we go through. Um, it's, it's no, it's no uh, way to, no cheat code to get over that, it's just we have to be there as a support system and, um, and, um, and, and having faith in God, that's, that was one of the biggest things too, church. That's, that was the biggest thing. That was one of those biggest turns for me that, because at one time I was, I was reacting the wrong way to things. Now the wrong way to react to things is reacting, violence. I, I, <laughs> I wasn't always good because I didn't understand how to be. And once I, Check myself, my parents talked to me, hey, hey, I had a lot of anger built up in me because of something, I'm like, people, I'm like, why nobody like me, man? I've, I've done nothing wrong. I didn't ask to be here like this. And that was the hardest thing for me to deal with, but I overcame it. Because I can do all things. Exactly, so when you're having a bad day, when, 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 when you feel like you, your peers are picking on you, you just think, I can do all things through Christ. Exactly. Yes. Man, you guys, are y'all going to be doctors or something one of these days? Um, how often? So, actually, I'm due for a new pair now because I've been training, and as I get more muscle, uh, the prosthetic will get a lot tighter. Or if I eat too much, just throw my diet out the window, I'll gain weight. Um, so it just all depends. Now, as a kid growing up, every six months to a year, I'm in and out getting new legs because I'm constantly growing. Um, 
who haven't. Um, actually, not anymore because my prosthesis in Orlando, that's where I go get my prosthetics made at, POA, designed a, uh, a different socket. So it's super, super easy to take on and off, and I'll show you how this, this socket, this socket is designed to allow you to grow. So you, this is my, my, my leg is inside of this sleeve, but all I have to do is roll this sleeve down and pull it off and it's off. So my, this, I'm above the knee, but he incorporated a below the knee system in above the knee socket, so it's pretty cool. It's designed to grow muscle, so it's, it's, it's pretty cool. You guys, hey, listen, you guys, teachers are doing a good job here. Y'all got some smart kids. So these things could go from ten to fifty to a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. A gentleman here in the black. How tall? Oh, okay, how tall I'm normally. I think right now I may I may be about five nine, maybe five eight, five nine. I I just I'm at this height because it's uh easier to me drive my vehicles and stuff. Um, the doctor said that I would be about 6'2 if I had my, uh, my, had my legs. Yeah. Uh, literally like not even a minute. It's pretty quick. No. I take them off. It's just like, it's like, okay, just, just, okay, so you guys been in school all day, right? Been in school, that's a valid question. You been in school all day, or been running around playing, and then you get home, or, or you guys at work all day, and you get home, and you know that feeling when you take your shoes off, it's like, ah, oh, take those socks off. It's like double off when I take mine off. <laughs> that is a very, man, you got, y'all, listen, I promise, I'm, I'm not, I'm in the church house, right? I've been to a lot of places, and you guys have, asked, have been asking some of the best questions. Um, say it one more time so everybody can hear you. Do you pay for the prosthetics for the brace or anything like that? Doing a long jump? No. Unfortunately, well, no, I don't because me making a team, you get sponsors, so um, I, I'll the they'll give me like product sponsors. So I make the team, and then they can't tell me no. If I'm at the games and stuff to break, they can't tell me no. A support animal? Um, no, I haven't had a support animal, but I have animals. But uh, uh, I know uh, I have I have a friend, uh, Kim Crosby. She's a visually impaired Paralympian, and she has she has a CNI dog and a companion dog. So, uh, and um, I know a couple other athletes that have those. question. So, every, every amputee wants to live a social and normal lifestyle, right? Uh, want to go out fishing, boating, and stuff like that. Uh, eat something as simple as walking in the rain. So, now, uh, later on in the years, and now they have technology now where they're not really waterproof, but they're water resistant. Like, I don't want to submerge myself in a, jump in a pool with these on. They have different prosthetics that you can put on for running, I mean for, for swimming, just like a fin or something like that. But most amputees, they swim without their prosthetics. But that is a good question. Um, it won't short circuit or anything if I'm in the rain. What made me want to do long jump? Uh, coach at the Olympic Training Center, uh, Jeremy Fisher. He's one of the, uh, one of the gold medalists, uh, Will Clay's coaches. I was, I was at a camp. At the, at the center, and he was like, man, you're a sprinter. And everybody had to, had to try to long jump, and I was so terrified of, of jumping because I'm like, man, I'm on prostate legs. I cannot jump. And uh, he had me jumping onto the mat to build my confidence, and then that's how I got started. I can make myself as tall as I probably could have my head touching the top of that, but that would be very, very hard for me to walk. It's possible to do it. Like, literally, I can make myself as tall as I want. Did I try? No, nah, because I'm terrified of heights. <laughs> yeah. To learn how to walk? Um, 
it didn't take me long at all um, because my mom was telling me when I was a kid that before I had my operation, I was trying to walk. I just couldn't stand up because I didn't have bones from the knee down. So um, I got my first prostate when I was about three. So I, it just, it was like second nature. Now running, that was a different story. Well, I could run, but the hardest part for me to do was stop. I used to, have, when I first started running, I used to have somebody at the end and like catch me. <laughs> Dude, are you going to be an engineer? Wow, how did I guess that? So yes, carbon fiber is a high energy storing foot. Um, it only gives you as much as you put into it. Um, the, the object is to get as much return as you can get out of that blade. So those are made out of carbon, carbon fiber. Um, they do a uh, pre-preg. Uh, they do it into some, I forget the name of the machine, but it, it, it freezes it in all types. Of, it has several layers. I think they use the I-beam effect in there as well. Hello, 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 hello. Can you hear me now? All right, cool. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. All right, cool. All right, awesome. Well, you guys do ask awesome questions, by the way. I'm very proud of you in that regard. Uh, first off, can we thank Mr. Woods for being here today with us? And before, before, before I let you walk out of here, um, I want us to take an opportunity. Can we pray over you real quick? Yes. And uh, obviously, um, so if you guys would just bow your heads, um, I'll lead us in prayer here. Uh, good and gracious Father, Lord, uh, first and foremost, um, I thank you for Regis, and I thank you for his presence here at Grace Christian School here today. Lord, thank you for him giving of his time and giving him of, of his talents and sharing his testimony with us, Lord. Uh, Lord, you've done an amazing work in his life, and Lord, I just pray that his story is a reminder to each and every one of us sitting in this room about amazing works that you're doing in our lives. And a lot of times, Lord, it's things that we're not even really aware of that you're really at work at. And so, Lord, help us just to open our eyes and open our minds to see what, what, what you're, what's going on, uh, what, what you're doing for us, Lord, and to anticipate the blessings that you're wanting to provide for us and to, and to look for your guidance and your wisdom and your provision. Lord, I thank you for his ministry. I thank you for his achievements. And Lord, I, I'm, I th I'm also just mostly thankful, Lord, that he gives all those achievements to you and honors you with what he does every single day. So Lord, please bless Regis um, in his, his personal journey and his personal endeavors when it comes to training for the upcoming uh, Olympics. Lord, I ask you to bless his family, uh, bless his life, bless the, the things that he does as he continues to share his story and through sharing his story, sharing uh, his relationship with you. Lord, bless these children. Uh, bless the rest of our day here at our retreat. And Lord, it's in your holy and precious name that we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, let's give one last round of applause. <laughs> Can, we get them all? Can we get them all to say, we just, we just was Paris 2024. I'm gonna do it. Yeah, we, yeah, we can do that. All right, so we're gonna, we're gonna, you wanna, you wanna explain what you're gonna have them do? All right, so we're gonna say, uh, I wanna get you guys to say, Regis Woods, Paris 2024, all right? Let's see if we can get it on here. Re oh, you can just say Regis, Paris 2024. You ready? One, two, and let me hear it. Regis Woods, Paris 2024! Yeah! <laughs> Go USA! <laughs> thank you, thank, thank you very much. All right. Uh, teachers, we're going to transition into our small group discussion, just in case you forgot. Um